Well, good afternoon. This is Mark Wilkinson from the Seal Right Corporation and uh, welcoming you to the Pump Seal Channel for yet another uh, uh, short uh, treatise on the truth according to the fluid sealing industry. I guess they felt it important to ask the old man to say something just to make sure he was still alive, but I assure you I am. So anyway, here we go. You know, one of the one of the most difficult things for people who are involved in the fluid sealing industry uh, is to get back to basics, to understand what the basics really are. And then, of course, you realize that everyone else uh, in the world that has to use these products, um, you know, has a hard time uh, finding things that do what they want them to do. Part of the reason is because they too lack uh, the basics that that uh, are really very compelling when you think about it. So in a very short span of time, I'm going to discuss braided packing. And, and I suppose you could uh, think that there's nothing less interesting on planet Earth. And uh, I know what it is. Well, Look, the conception of, of packing per se is that you cut it in rings, you stuff it in a pump, and you crank down on it and you get a seal. And that's, that's the fundamental premise that, that uh, we work with when, when they're in the field. But there's a lot more to it than that. And uh, it's important to understand what its function really is, okay? And the best way for me to do that is stand for just a minute um, and... Uh, Put it on the board so we have a clear understanding about the multifunction uh, role that braided packing does, regardless of brand or type, okay? Pardon my drawing. This is a shaft. This is a stuffing box. We have water. We have all kinds of things in there. And uh, so what we try to do is we try to measure and cut rings on the shaft to go in and they take up these positions. Boom, boom, boom. Then you have a lantern ring and then more rings of packing, okay? What you've really done here is you've filled the void that exists known as a stuffing box. Stuffing boxes exist on, on many, many different uh, types of equipment, including ocean-going vessels tugs, etc. They have stuffing boxes and it's the cavity that we have as limited as it is to seal. So when you put a ring of packing into a stuffing box and seat it to the bottom, what you've done is to create a barrier, a physical barrier for fluids or gases or what have you to come in. And then as you add subsequent rings, Okay, you're putting more of a barrier. So what you've got from beginning to end is a physical barrier that you have provided by virtue of the packing that you're using. If we had our druthers, we would rather seal hydraulically than we would frictionally because friction is the other way that packing seals, which is why there are gland followers. Okay. So the packing goes in, breaks down the pressure right along here, trying to divert because you fill the rest of it, leakage to come out along the shaft. So what you're doing is reducing pressure at each point and you're reducing volume. But unless you've got rings of packing out to here, you're probably not going to stop the leakage because once leakage gets by, it migrates and migrates and migrates. So a gland follower is put into place as a mechanical adjustment, like so, to interrupt the hydraulic sealing portion of this and provide some friction. And what that does is the follower comes in and it compresses the packing and drives the force down to the sleeve. At least that's what it's supposed to do. So you've got two different ways that packing seals. One is hydraulic by breaking pressure down. The other is friction by exerting force in the other direction. Which would you rather, friction seal 
or hydraulic seal if you could only have one? Well, the answer is hydraulic because the more you can seal hydraulically, the less wear occurs on the hard parts. Unfortunately, we, <laughs> we have to use friction. So now braided packing has several different roles that it has to fill. I'm going to explain them here for you so you can uh, you get that basic understanding about the compromise between the two ways that packing seals. Okay? Now you notice when you when you you look at braided packing and you see all sorts of different colors and shiny silvers and blacks and whites and yellows and all that stuff. Okay, here's an abject example of it. What are we looking at? We're looking at textiles. Okay. Yes, textiles that are formed and drawn and so forth specifically for braided packing, but textiles nonetheless. No different than the clothes you wear, the rug you walk on, the, the furniture that you sit in. Textiles are textiles. They're just different according to their individual needs. So this is the way typically braided packing starts where you have strands of different diameters of different materials. Okay, this has to be converted into products that are square so they can be wrapped and pushed into a stuffing box. Okay? Now what do you see when you, when you look at packing? You look at the surface of the packing. Oh, you can see the textile. You can see a pattern, which is a function of the machinery that manufactures packing. That's the topic of another uh, pump seal channel video. But you can see it, right? What's in between that? When you braid from textiles, Prior to any treatment, you are left with a very substantial volume of air. Air is what is in between, just like in your clothing. If you had a microscope up against, up against the cotton, you can eventually see the individual strands, and there's a whole bunch of air in between it. That's one of the things that helps cloth on your back to breathe, okay? But air is the enemy. Air also, uh, when it's entrained in textiles, um, and you adjust those textiles, the packing compresses, okay? So it, it is reduced in cross-section, it's called consolidation. So you have to provide some sort of temporary uh, resistance to that and get rid of the air. So what most manufacturers do is to take packing from textiles and soak it. Dunk it, soak it, treat it, whatever. Okay? Magic stuff. They won't tell you what it is. What I know, though, is packing is sold by the pound. And if textiles cost 50 bucks a pound and dispersion costs 20 bucks a pound, what are you going to do? You're going to load it up with 20 bucks a pound, aren't you? <laughs> anyway, so here we are. Now this piece of packing is going to go in and act as a hydraulic barrier. What are you looking for? You're looking for smooth contact on the sealing surface. You are looking for intimacy. The more lumpy bumpies you have in your contact, the poorer this will seal hydraulically. Okay, so you look for the ability of a packing to semi-sheet and form a nice smooth surface to seal hydraulically, which will then result in having to use less friction and adjustment. 
Okay, so that's what you look for. Bend the packing around, take your thumb, feel it. What am I talking about here? So dispersions, which is what are put into packing, Teflon, graphites, molybdenum, uh, waxes, oils, greases, etc., etc., are meant to be temporary. They are meant to leave the packing as you adjust. One of the good questions you should have is what percentage of fillers is used in this packing. Manufacturers should be required to tell you that because that's what's temporary in that packing. It's designed to be temporary. Okay, um, so there we, there we are. We're trying to seal hydraulically, but sometimes we have to use friction. Therefore, what you're looking for in textiles are materials that transfer heat. When you transfer heat through the body of packing, which varies according to the individual textiles, then you can run with more gland tension, you can seal more with friction without it burning up and so forth. I mean, the old stories of old with Teflon are legend, how people smoke the daylights out of it. And, uh, you know, so there were, for the longest time in the 70s, people, you couldn't talk to anybody uh, about Teflon dispersion. They wouldn't have anything, you know, wouldn't buy a thing from you if you did. Okay. But today we have, we have a selection of materials that are available that uh, conduct heat and at the same time deal with uh, other issues like tensile strength. So, for instance, in a product like this, we have heat conductivity with a white material, uh, but we have tensile strength um, with the yellow material. And what's more important about that is the tensile strength is not only very, very high, but the elongation of break is very low. That means it doesn't stretch, okay? So you get a combination of things. We have a tendency as a company to put together materials which are highly heat conductive, but very, very chemical resistant, for instance all of which can seal frictionally, if necessary, to a higher degree than the common generic materials can. Okay? Now here's a material that, for instance, doesn't seal well frictionally at all because it is made purely uh, of, of a Teflon-based yarn that conducts zero heat that through its expansion characteristic through 220 degrees Fahrenheit will swell 24% and provide more friction than what you want. So very, very difficult to get certain kinds of products to do what you want them to do. But you've got to ask yourself, do I want to seal hydraulically or do I want to seal frictionally? I promise you if, you, if you want to seal hydraulically, but the installation you use, the precision cutting of the rings, the precision seating of the rings, will diminish significantly the amount of hydraulic sealing you can do. Then you're relying totally on friction. Okay? Whenever you run across a gland follower that's bottomed out, <laughs> obviously, You've had something that has relied on friction and it kept being adjusted and adjusted and adjusted till the body of the packing was spent. You were down to bare textiles. Okay, we don't necessarily want to get there. What we have to keep in mind is, is the fact that packing is a multifunction product. It isn't about anymore today. Uh, what the cheapest price is. Those were the days of uh, single A, double A, and triple A, and 4A asbestos. And it could have either graphite or Teflon. That was the menu. Today, there are many, many choices that people have. And to make the proper choices, which will also be the subject of another uh, sit down on the Pump Seal channel, is how do you go about determining what it is that's best for what your need is. You should be able, as a consumer of product, you should be able to specify what you want. You should be able to analyze what is capable 
of sealing hydraulically and what is not. Where friction is going to come into play and therefore what materials you select, what type of braid, etc. There's a host of choices for another time. Okay, but it's not just greasy rope anymore, folks. It's ring by ring. Um, and you can listen to Seth's installation guides on these things. Extremely important. Okay, so that's the dual nature of packing. It has evolved tremendously uh, over time. And, uh, you know, welcome to the company that uh, enjoys many, many patents, but also a degree of success that uh, we... We really enjoy. We really enjoy helping people to get the very best uh, by understanding what it is they're using. So uh, more on that later. Anyway, y'all have a great day, and it's been nice chatting. Bye-bye.